Good morning. I hope everybody's well. Um, I have to say that this is the second time that I am recording this. I tried to record it last night at home and it recorded about a minute and 27 seconds and then it quit, but it didn't let me know that it quit. So I'm recording this again this morning. So I hope that this one works a little bit better for your sake and my sake. Um, technology happens. So you just take it with a grain of salt and you do it again and do what needs to be done. It's part of being responsible, like we were talking about yesterday. So let's go over our story really quickly and catch up from where we left off the last time so that we're ready to continue our story along. When we do that, we're talking about the plot or the events of a story. And when you just highlight the important parts of a story in order, we can call that a summary. That's something that you will do a lot of. Each one of these pictures help us tell a summary of the story. It moves the plot along quickly. So we have here um, a brief retelling or a summary where Mole grows weary of spring cleaning, leaves his burrow out into the spring, meets a new friend, the water rat. The water rat becomes a great friend, takes him out onto the river and they explore the river. Rat tells Mole a lot about the world that Mole doesn't know about, invites him to a picnic. They are briefly introduced to some new characters, Otter, and at least we see Badger, just hear about him very briefly, as well as briefly see Mr. Toad. There is a big accident because Mole is acting sort of irresponsibly and trying to grab the oars, trying to do something that he doesn't know how to do yet. Makes sort of a mess of thing. He apologizes and they end up in Rat's house, best of friends. So that is a summary of the story so far. It's the main events in order without a whole lot of detail. That's what a summary is. And using these pictures in this slideshow is a great way to get good at telling a summary. Just tell the what's going on in the slide and that's your summary. So let's move on to chapter three. This is called The Open Road. Ratty, said the mole suddenly one bright summer morning, I want to ask you a favor. The rat was sitting on the riverbank, singing a little song called Duck's Ditty that he had just composed. All along the backwater, through the rushes tall, ducks are a-dabbling, up tails all. Duck's tails, drake's tails, yellow feet a-quiver, yellow bills all out of sight, busy in the river. Everyone for what he likes. We like to be heads down, tails up, dabbling free. I don't know if I like that song, Rat, said the mole cautiously. Nor do the ducks, replied the rat. Ratty, began the mole again. What I wanted to ask was, won't you take me to call on Mr. Toad? I've heard so much about him. Why, certainly, said the good-natured rat. Get the boat out. It's never the wrong time to call on Toad. He must be a very nice animal, observed the mole as he got into the boat and took the skulls. Hmm, if Mole took the skulls, he must have learned something between spring and summer. Hmm. He is indeed the best of animals, replied Rat, as they set off to visit the distinguished Mr. Toad. Before long, as they rounded a bend in the river, they came in sight of an elegant, old, red brick house with well-kept lawns reaching down to the water's edge. There's Toad Hall, said the rat, and that creek on the left, where the notice board says private, leads to his boat house, where we'll leave the boat. The stables are over there on the right. That's the banqueting hall you're looking at now. Toad is rich, you know. They glided up the creek and into the shadow of a large boat house. There they disembarked and went in search of Toad. They found Toad resting in a wicker garden chair. 
with a large map spread out on his knees. Hooray, he cried, jumping up upon seeing them. This is splendid. He took the paws of both of them warmly. I was just going to send a boat down to the river for you. I need your help, Ratty, said Toad. It's about your rowing, I suppose, said the rat. Oh, poo on boating, re interrupted the toad. I've given that up. Now come with me, dear friends. I have something to show you. And he led the way to the stable yard, and there they saw a gypsy caravan shining with newness and painted a canary yellow and green. Now, gypsies are wandering people who originally came from northern India, and a caravan is a large covered wagon that's used as a traveling home. Some gypsies, as well as other people, used traveled along in caravans. Gypsies still exist today and travel in all kinds of different ways. But this canary yellow and green is the, canaver is the color of a canary bird. Well, there you are, cried the toad. This real life, this is real life for you. The open road, the dusty highway, this is a very finest cart of its sort. Come inside and take a look. The mole was tremendously excited and followed him eagerly up the steps and into the caravan. The rat refused to follow. It was indeed very compact and comfortable. There were sleeping bunks, a little table that folded up, a cooking stove, a bird cage with a real bird in it, and a variety of pots and pans. All complete, said the toad triumphantly, pulling up a cupboard to reveal a variety of tasty treats. We are ready to set off this very afternoon. I beg your pardon, said the rat slowly. But did I hover over hear you saying something about we and set off and this afternoon? Now, Ratty, said Toad, don't begin talking in that sniffy sort of way. I can't, um, I can't manage without you. You surely don't mean to stick to your dull old river all your life. I'm not coming, said the rat, and I am going to stick to my old river. And what's more, Mole is going to stick with me, aren't you, Mole? Well, of course I am, said the Mole loyally. All the same, it sounds as if it might have been fun, he added wistfully. The rat saw that the Mole was disappointed. He hated disappointing people. Toad was watching both of them closely. Come along in and have some lunch, he said diplomatically, and we'll talk it over. We needn't decide anything in a hurry. During luncheon, Toad spoke enthusiastically of the joys of the open road, so much so that the mole could hardly sit still in his chair. And before long, unable to disappoint his friends, the rat had agreed to go. When they were ready, Toad led his companions to the paddock. A paddock is a small field that's fenced in to capture the old gray horse. For his part, the old gray horse did not want to be captured. Eventually though, the horse was caught and harnessed and they set off. <clears throat> it was a golden afternoon. The smell of the dust they kicked up was rich and satisfying. Late in the evening, they drew up on a remote common. It's sort of a piece of land that's owned by many people, and it's open to the community to use, like a park. They turned the horse loose to graze and ate their simple supper sitting on the grass. At last, they turned to their little bunks in the cart. Toad sleepily said, well, good night, you fellows. This is a real life for a gentleman. After so much open air, the toad slept very soundly, and no amount of shaking could rouse him in the morning. So the mole and rat set to work. The rat saw to the horse and lit a fire, while the mole trudged off to the nearest village for milk and eggs. The hard work had all been done by the time toad appeared. They had a pleasant ramble that day along narrow lanes and camped as before on a common. This time, the two guests 
made sure that Toad did his fair share of the work. As a result, when the time came for starting next morning, Toad was no longer singing the praises of the open road. Their way lay, as before, along narrow country lanes, and it was not till the afternoon that they encountered their first main road. There, disaster struck. <clears throat> For as they strolled and chatted from far behind them, an unfamiliar sound could be heard. Glancing back, they saw a small cloud of dust advancing on them. From out of the dust, a faint put, put, put sound. Ignoring this strange vision, they turned to resume their conversation. And then in an instant, the peaceful scene was changed. A blast of wind and a whirl of sound caused them to jump out of the road. And put, put, the sound rang out once more. As the sound rang out, they glimpsed a magnificent motor car with its pilot hugging the wheel. This splendid vehicle flung a cloud of dust in their direction and then was gone. At the sight and sound of this vehicle, the old gray horse reared and backed toward a ditch. Before long, the canary yellow and green colored cart lay on its side. The rat danced up and down in the road. You villains, he shouted, shaking both fists. And while rat was shaking his fists, the toad sat straight down in the middle of the dusty road and murmured, For his part, the mole was busy trying to quiet the horse, and then he went to look at the cart on its side in the ditch. The rat came to help him, but to no avail. Hey, toad, they cried, come and help us. The toad did not reply. So they went to see what was the matter. They found him in a sort of a trance, his eyes still fixed on the dusty road. The rat shook him. Are you coming to help us, Toad? He demanded. Wonderful sight, murmured Toad. The real way to travel. Oh, stop being a fool, Toad, cried the mole. And to think, I never knew, continued the Toad. But now that I do, what dust clouds shall, sh shall, shall soon spring up behind me? What are we going to do with him? asked the mole to the rat. Nothing at all, replied the rat firmly. You see, I know him too well. He is now possessed. Never mind him. Let's go and see what there is to be done about the cart. A careful inspection showed that the cart was in a hopeless state. The rat nodded the horse's reins over his back and took him by the head, carrying the birdcage in the other hand. Come on, he said grimly to the mole. It's five or six miles to the nearest town, and we shall just have to walk. But what about Toad? asked the mole anxiously. Oh, bother Toad, said the rat. I've done with him. They had not proceeded very far on their way, however, when there was a pattering of feet behind them, and Toad caught up to them. Now look here, Toad, said the rat sharply. As soon as we get to the town, you'll have to go straight to the police station to lodge a complaint, and then you'll have to make arrangements to have the cart mended. Police station? Complaint, murmured Toad. Me? Complain of that heavenly vision that has saved me? Mend the cart? I've done with carts forever. The rat turned from him in despair. You see, he said to the mole, addressing him across Toad's head, he's quite hopeless. On reaching the town, they left the horse at a stable and gave what directions they could about the cart. They went home by train and escorted Toad to his house. Then they got out their boat from the boathouse and set off for home. The following evening, the mole was sitting on the bank fishing when the rat who had been chatting to friends, came strolling along to find him. Heard the news, he said. Toad went, up, Toad went up to town and ordered a large and very expensive motor car. Oh dear, what do you think will happen next? Hmm. Well, let's answer some questions and think about this par portion of our story. What caused the caravan to crash? 
well, there was a motor car, we just call it a car, driven by a reckless driver that caused the horse to rear up and back the caravan into the ditch. What are themes? We've talked a little bit about themes. Themes are broad ideas that come up many times over the course of a story or a book. They help to guide the story along and to teach us things. So which character has demonstrated the theme of friendship and loyalty? Well, Rat taking Mole to call on Toad <clears throat> is friendship. Rat agreeing to travel with Toad because he worries about Toad traveling on his own. That's being a loyal friend. Camping on the commons together. What about responsibility and irresponsibility? Can you think of any ways that the characters were either responsible or irresponsible? Pretty clear dis discovery of responsible and irresponsible here. Rat and Mole taking care of the work on the trip. That was responsible. Somebody had to do the work. And then irresponsibility would be Toad not helping on the trip. Responsibility, Rat and Mole taking care of the wrecked caravan and the horse and Toad after the car accident. And irresponsibility, Toad not caring about the wreck. You will see really good examples of the theme of responsibility and irresponsible, how the characters act, okay? Can you think about what season we are now in on this story? We've sort of moved from spring to what season? Summer. So the setting has changed. Remember the setting is where a story takes place and when a story takes place. So the when part of our story has changed from spring to summer and the where has, has changed throughout the story. It changes a lot. We've gone from Rat's house to Toad Hall and out on the open road. So that setting changes a lot in this story. Um, adjectives, other words that might describe Toad. Toad is boastful. Toad is fun. He's generous. He's a nice animal, but he's irresponsible. Toad is wasteful and self-centered. Then we have a, a description of Toad Hall, and we use adjectives to describe Toad Hall. They said it was old, it was dignified, it was big and red brick. There are some animals in today's read aloud that are not personified. When we look at this last so slide, we see rat, toad, and mole all acting like people. They're having conversations, they're driving in, in, uh, you know, in a caravan, they're wearing clothes, they're doing chores. All of those things are things that people do. So these animals are personified, but we also see a, a couple of animals who are not personified. The horse just acts like a horse. This animal is not personified. The bird just acts like a bird. This animal is not personified. So we will compare, uh, continue to talk about that kind of thing. Um, if we compare and contrast something, Comparing is telling how things are the same. Contrasting is telling how things are different. Just different words for that, comparing and contrasting. So you can compare and contrast Toad's reaction with Moles and Rat's reaction after they all see the motor car and the caravan wrecks. Toad's state is dreamlike and spellbound and fascinated. He's possessed and practically in a trance, and he isn't even worried or upset about the state of the wrecked caravan. Toad seems ready to walk away from the wreck without doing anything. Rat and Mole, on the other hand, and if you're going to contrast, you might say, on the other hand, Rat and Mole have a different response. They are upset, frustrated, angry at Toad because he doesn't seem to care about the wreck the motor car has made of his caravan, or how their trip is ruined. Rat and Mole feel a sense of responsibility to take care of the horse and the wrecked caravan, as well as to take care of Toad. Toad behaves in an irresponsible way. 
and doesn't seem to even care. Hmm. So this author is giving you very clear examples of responsibility and irresponsibility in this story. And that's all for today.